Hello and welcome to my channel, The Urban Angel, the waistcoat man coming at you. Welcome wherever you're coming from in the world, whatever time that you're tuning in. Thank you for the continued support. I'm delighted to announce that I've just hit treble figures. So over the course of this last two weeks, it's been absolutely fantastic. So I've estab established a bit of a formula there. I'm learning, I'm evolving as I go along. So this is the latest uh, video production from the, my book, Graceful Thoughts. The pocket book of wisdom, as I call it, because it's one of those that can be read quite quickly. And no matter what the timing of the article when I writ wrote it, written it, written written it then it's always relevant whatever the time of the year is because it's the way that i process thoughts so have a ha have a need at times to go out and deal with sort of anxious thoughts over overriding thoughts repetitive thoughts and sometimes i look for peace and where i get my peace is when i go and take my dogs out for a walk walk in the local woods and then it calms my energies down a bit so these these videos this is now the third attempt because i have this part of of me that wants to get everything just right but do you know what this is this is the reality of life you're going to have difficulties you're going to have things that are just going to crop up in the moment so i'm not going to edit uh, many more of these what i'm just going to do is just keep going with the with the rawness of it so as I say, the book there, Graceful Thoughts, available from me. I will put a quick scroll banner up there for you just to say that if anybody's interested, they can be bought direct from me. I'm going to read a chapter out of th this book today that was written in uh, 2020 at the height of the COVID issues that we was having. And I was looking at how to inspire people. Um to make changes, how they were going to bring differences to their life and also help in people realise that there are eclectic thought thinkers out there who think different to the main, but you're not on your own because that's my life every single day that I think in different ways. I'm colourful. I've got an eclectic mindset. But what I've learned to do over the years is now accept it. I accept me a lot easier than I used to. So I give you the uh, article that I wrote in 2020 that was called New Year, New Me. New Year, New Me. Those people who know me well know that I spend a lot of time on Facebook. I read and observe and absorb lots of different people's statuses. I will offer opinion or comment if asked for. But a lot of what I read will pass by without comment or further thought. This week in particular, has drawn me to the keyboard to put down some of those thoughts. As we close out one year and head into a new one, people will use this time to assess current progress and reminisce and feel the need to explain where they have got to. And sometimes, sadly, those things and people that have been lost along the way. It appears to, to me to be a kind of mental stock tape recorded in the memories. My question is why? Is there a need to register everything? Is there anything within memories that can provide the stimulus or the inclination to change? Many people will use December the 31st as a closure point and January the 1st as an opener. The line, New Year, New Me, can often be heard being recited by the optimistic amongst us. We start with much energy and dedicate ourselves to making things work. January will see massive uptakes of new ventures, car parks at the gym are full, and diet, diet clubs are oversubscribed. Further education courses are often sought to prove oneself the evolution of the self. All very positive. And then around the third year, third week of January, it starts to feel more like the year before. Why? Because reality is set in. And resilience and patience have been tested. The new passion is now being questioned. And progress, so decided a short time ago, has slowed. Why, you might ask yourself, well, here's my observation, and hopefully where we can notice a specific recurring pattern. I often hear during consultations that people believe that they're at a crossroads point in their lives. This idea suggests that people desire to go down a different path, but are often afraid to make a decision. So they justify not choosing by using an old strategy that will only take them to the same destination. By commenting, I am stuck, indecision can only be dealt with, in my humble opinion, by direct action. To help solve a problem, I believe you have to look at its origins. 
So, dear reader, and dear viewer in this case, I'm about to take you on a short journey into an imaginary scenario. You're in a place of your choosing, and the time is 11.59, December the 31st, and 0000, zero, zero, zero hours, January the 1st. Now, take a look around you and absorb your surroundings. At this point, I ask a question. Who will be going with you from one point to the next? Who will you? Who will have the main consistency in your life? The answer is you. And you are the difference maker. While we are at that moment, we need to look at the individual's mindset before the next move is made. The key to starting any new journey is preparation. Ask specific questions. Have I all the things I need before I begin? Am I adequately prepared for this scenario? If it is new year, new me, what is new me going to look like? How am I going to operate? And later, how will I know if the changes desired are working? And indeed, how will I recognise if there is anything different happening in the new life to the one that I'm currently living? These are compelling questions. As human beings live in a human existence, there is a tendency to self-sabotage. What can be useful for us can also be not so good if mishandled. Even a small problem or an obstacle can impede progress. We set an intention, a goal, a new direction, all positive. However, the reality is to achieve, we must have a method of operation or steps put in place to make that intention a reality. Think of an instruction manual numbered from beginning to end. And if followed, it should achieve the desired result. A way to overcome a hurdle is presented this way. Imagine I give you a mobile phone with the general operating instructions. You're familiar with it and press the right buttons and it works normally. Now imagine I give you a brand new phone and ask you to operate the phone with old instructions. The chances of the new phone working correctly are between slim and none. Using old instructions will get you to the same place every time. New guidelines or commands need time to be absorbed, tested and see where we end up once we use them. Updated operations, operating instructions apply to a new phone, new phone will work. The thing is, we tend to operate within our comfort zone, often completing a mundane task on autopilot. It doesn't fulfill, but the job is completed. If we wish to make positive and long-lived changes to our lives, the need is to remember at some level there is something about old habits which influence new changes and choices. When we feel uncomfortable or we are not content and change is required, old thought patterns often restrict the changes necessary. How do I deal with something that I am currently doing that isn't working for me or how I initially visualised it? First, I look at my method of operation. Neuro-linguistic programming has taught me that if you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got. In other words, put the same steps in place consistently and the result will be the same. We're essentially giant computers storing and processing vast chunks of information and data. We can process so many things and sometimes we will download programs or information with bugs in them. To make changes at the core, we've got to reprogram to achieve different results to the ones that we're currently getting. The need for change requires me to notice that where I end up is entirely down to the instructions and the guidance that I give myself. Working in line with or alongside clearly defined ideas now takes on paramount importance. My thoughts, hopes and inspirations must be congruent or in line with my operation method if they are to succeed. And if they aren't, I will always return to default settings with old me for company. Now, back to where we started. What is the secret of sustained change? Preparation. I need to be prepared to leave behind any thoughts, ideas or habits which do not serve the old me. The new me is waiting to advance but lacks awareness or instructions because it hasn't experienced the new. So I need to issue further instructions. Guide the new me onto the new path. It is crucial to realise that there might be days where I'm learning as I go, keeping what works and discarding what doesn't. Now, the new destination comes into my focus. My operating way is leading me to the new version of me. My thoughts and actions are in line and congruent. The new programme has now been written and stored, and I will soon end up where I have set out to go to. My message is, dear, dear friend, assess where you're at and up. 
and do it often always remember don't sweat the small stuff celebrate the victories no matter how seemingly small the steps are recognize the new you move forward and realize that you won't appear until you let go of old you and leave the early programming behind time is after all a human made concept so don't wait until a year end or a new year to make changes knowing that you can do it at any time and in some way i feel that this year coming may be to, uh, one that we'll, we'll all remember there is certainly a great feeling of change and turmoil in the world at this time i do not wish to be negative but hanging on to your seats 2020 will be a historic year exit from the eu a trade deal a feeling there will be great oppression and government control now three two one happy new year who's going forward and who's being left behind knew you were weights. So that was my vision from 2019 to 2020. And what a year of change it was. Lots of people have had to change old thought patterns. Lots of people have had to um, change the, the way that they behave around people, who that they're associated with, who that they're aligned with. Three years further on down the line and uh, we're still making huge changes. The full impact of what happened during those those times are um, still being felt. The energy is incredibly difficult at times to deal with. We're in a, a state of constant change and evolution. So from 2019 to 2023, the uh, thoughts and the energies around me are, are changed dramatically. And it's almost like uploading and when you're uploading, you have to upload new fixes, you upload new uh, ways of thinking and new patterns. But to do that, the memory will often get full. So we'll have to have a defrag every now and again and get rid of old thought processes, old ways of dealing with, sometimes even shedding other people that we've been close to, or other people that we've been associated with, different relationships, different ways of viewing how uh, that we perceive life. My constant thought with all of these videos is that life is live. So we get feedback constantly. So don't worry about what if, don't worry about how you're gonna go um, on tomorrow or a week, a week away, live in this moment now. Lots of changes are around for all of us, I believe. The world that we know as, as I sit here recording this in 2023 will no doubt be incredibly different if I did this as an edit four years down the line. But I, for one, I'm looking forward to those changes. I'm looking forward to uh, reaching more people with my brand of healing, connecting in with my guides, my inspirers, my tarot work, my speeching, uh, speech on stage and things like that. I'm, I'm so proud. And uh, I close out this particular recording by saying thank you very much for everybody tuning in. Thank you for anybody that's influenced by it. As I say there, my book can be bought. I still have a few copies left for on the second run from me direct there. And I'll put that up just very, very briefly again. Uh, they can be bought for me directly. £7, the pocketbook of wisdom. 17 different articles. Seven, 17 different stories that I've been influenced as I've walked around the local woods with my dogs. And if anybody wants to... Uh, listen to my thoughts listen to that keep tuning in and keep uh, smashing that subscribe button thank you very much really appreciate your you guys time and i will send out love and light to all those that have watched it and we hopefully we can influence many more people thank you kind regards much love from the urban angel